Hi, I'm Pete Nigerian, class of 1986 and co-founder of Trade Monster. On the field and in the markets, there is no room for error. You need to be prepared, have a plan, focus when executing, and stay disciplined at all times. That's why we have built the Trade Monster platform to help investors become successful in the markets. Success doesn't come overnight. You build it brick by brick. The Golden Gophers and San Jose State. Minnesota's trying to go 4-0 on the non-conference for the second consecutive year. Leitner with Roderick Williams behind him. Leitner going to keep. Has huge hole left side to the 30. 35-40 and out of bounds. Leitner on a keeper all the way. Turns it up. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Breaks a tackle into the red zone. Inside the 15. Stays on his feet to the 10. A gain of 11 on third and two. And here's the offset pistol. A handoff to Cotton. No, oh, the keeper, Leidner, lots of room. Touchdown! Minnesota Golden Gophers, 11 yards. Mitch Leidner on the ground one more time. Two catches, 81 yards. Fails over the middle, a high pass, but it caught. And it's Chandler Jones inside the 15. Ball pops out, but they say he's down. The Gophers recovered it, but the back judge came in. After further review, the ball came out before the runner was down. Leitner on third down, pass out of the shotgun, lob over the middle. That's K.J. May, caught! At the 40 and down to the 35 and a big gain and a horse collar tackle, a late flag. It's an eye formation behind Leidner, spins, handoff Cobb, hit, barrels forward, touchdown! Minnesota Golden Gophers, Jerry Kill rolls the dice a bit on fourth and goal and uh, he hits the jackpot there with a touchdown. Football. We're ahead in the first half, but you know we got to be ahead at the end of the game. And the only way you go do that, the only way you go do that, is go back out and play with intensity. One linebacker, Aaron Hill, the only linebacker. Seven D backs, back to pass, plenty of time, passing ball tip and picked off. Aaron Hill near sideline, 20 breaks a tackle to the 13, and he's down there. We knew going into the game that uh, David Fails was one of the best quarterbacks in the country. So we saw a couple new wrinkles from him. Uh, it took a little bit of time to adjust, um, and we played one bad quarter. Quarterback sneak for Leitner, and it's hard to see. No one's made a signal yet. And the line judge now comes in and says, touchdown, Minnesota Golden Gophers, third touchdown of the day for Mitch Leitner. Not too bad in your first college start. Facing the quarterback like we did against San Jose State was a great test. It's a test that's welcome as a secondary. It's a test that you want going forward into a Big Ten. You know, it's a, a tough conference with a lot of great quarterbacks, so to face one going in was, was perfect timing. Leitner to pass, fires on the out, has his man Engel right near the first down stick, and Engel pushes forward. What a job by Derek Engel on the 11-yard gain. That was all second effort. Mitch Leidner, what a debut, 121 rushing yards and four touchdowns. And Minnesota, for the second consecutive year, will start its non-conference finish, I should say, its non-conference schedule at 4-0 and take on Iowa to start the Big Ten. Oh, no, man, keep it rolling. Oh, we Brick by brick, is going down. The Floyd Rosedale rivalry goes back to 1935, which was the second year of Minnesota's three straight national championships. Uh, Minnesota was heading to a November game down in Iowa City with a record of 5 and 0, and the Hawkeyes were 4 0 and 1. But Iowa fans were still kind of riled about the previous year when they thought that Minnesota had roughed up their star running back, Ozzie Simmons. 
And the Iowa governor kind of fueled the fire by suggesting that the referees put up with any foul play that the Iowa fans might not. So that left Minnesota a little bit concerned about their safety during the game, and that's where the Minnesota governor, Floyd B. Olson, stepped in. He uh, suggested a polite wager with Iowa and said, I'll bet a Minnesota prize hog against an Iowa prize hog that Minnesota will win. And that seemed to kind of ease the tension, and Minnesota went on to win the cleanly fought game. 13 to 6. So the Iowa governor followed through on the bet and delivered the hog, uh, who was from Rosedale Farms near Fort Dodge, Iowa, to the office of Governor Floyd B. Olson, and the rivalry was born. Iowa week, baby. See the big dogs put in some work. Let's go now. Let's go. Man, I've had so many dreams of this. Just for the fact that, like, me running over there to the Iowa's side, you know, caused chaos, grabbing that pig, and just seeing the faces of, you know, Iowa, knowing that they lost. The thing about Floyd is it's the one that has the most emotion behind it. There's a true hatred for Iowa that you come to understand when you when you play here and to carry that burden going forward you know to have that chip uh, there there's just nothing like it. and it's impossible to not be excited for, for, for the game of Iowa. I would truly say I didn't understand the meaning of the Iowa game until this year I think it was maybe our first first game and a little last week you could hear the crowd saying who hates Iowa we hate Iowa and I'm sitting looking at my teammates like man we don't play Iowa till a couple of weeks. They screaming, who hates Iowa? We're all Minnesotans now, and we know what the pig means. And so there's no, there's no talk that has to be done. The players know, you know, the alumni know. The alumni have seen the goalpost fall down in, in the Metrodome. And, you know, our players know. And it's a bad feeling to lose the pig. And, and, that, and we remember that. And it's something that we remind them of daily. We reminded them of it daily throughout the off season too. So it's not something that we take lightly around here. Playing for the pig uh, means a lot to the to the state. Uh, means, means a lot to, to the Big Ten and college football, in my opinion. And so it's a big game, and and we treat it as such. You know, it's almost like a Super Bowl game. And uh, we've got a couple of different rivalry games, and, and we treat them all. Uh, just the same and, and the intensity is picked up a little bit more in practice. Uh, I think the players are a little bit more uh, in tune and dialed in and, and uh, they, they, they really want to perform well because uh, they know that it means so much not only just to this team and this program but to the state of Minnesota. As soon as guys get here they begin to hear about the uh, rivalry, about what it means to win Floyd and to be able to go over and pick up that 90 pound pig and, and be able to, uh, to have it for a whole year that we try and keep it grounded and uh, we kind of let the, the rivalry itself and what our kids know kind of fuel them. For the fans to charge the field and, and, and celebrate with us after we win that uh, trophy, there, there, there's just nothing like it, you know, and it's just a great reminder of we don't play just for us. We might be out there on the field, but we, we represent this state and this game means so much to this state and uh, they're, they're more than welcome to come and celebrate with us this year. That's it, good. Iowa week now, let's go.